Uh, in the first part of the show, we're going to focus on the brokerage sector, of course, the challenges and opportunities over there. And for this purpose, let me bring to the show my first guest this evening, um, Duncan Anderson, CEO of Tick Mill. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Very nice to meet you. Uh, well, uh, I would like to start, uh, of course, with uh, regulation. Um, it has been more than a year since S uh, ESMA uh, cut forest leverage so far. What's the impact on Tick Mills accounting? Of course, when I say ESMA, I would like to uh, specify for our viewers I'm talking about European Securities and Markets Authority. Yes, uh, well, it's fair to say that uh, we noticed uh, an initial drop in overall volumes. Uh, when the ESMA uh, leverage uh, came out. Um, having said that, we've seen a gradual normalization to pre-ESMA levels since then. In fact, uh, this October uh, was uh, the second best month by volume in Tickmill's history. Uh, I mean, an interesting point to note is that Tickmill clients have always had the ability to manage their own leverage. So in large part, the impact has been relatively mild. Uh, a significant amount of our clients actually use algos uh, and that just required a little bit of tweaking by them to ensure that their trading was uninterrupted uh, by the changes. I mean, there is some anecdotal evidence that the clients are trading for longer time periods now, and this has uh, potentially also led to increased profitability. We've noticed that clients uh, have been happy to deposit additional funds, especially given the FSCS protection that's available and the fact that Ticknell has a strong balance sheet. Uh, what we have not done though, is repaper our European client base. And that's to say we haven't, we haven't repapered in other jurisdictions where there may be better leverage conditions. Uh, as we see this as a sort of pure regulatory arbitrage and um, uh, the risks involved in that are, are significant. And um, have you changed something in terms of strategies? Uh, as, as far as strategies go, it's, it's, it's really business as, as usual. The, um, uh, like I said, will we repaper clients, uh, our European client base? Uh, no, no, we won't. We, we will keep everything as is. So it's, it, it really is, uh, okay, it's a cut in leverage. It, it's, it doesn't affect us, it doesn't affect our clients. That's, that's our belief. On the other side, um, according to trade stats released exactly by brokers, they actually show that there are always customers that lose, which is pretty natural. But still, even if it's natural, it's a problem because, of course, nobody wants to lose. Uh, do you think the broker's business and client should be split between gambler and professional? And do you think um, that this is plausible? I, I, I think, first of all, there are a number of variables that, uh, that we don't see. I mean, for instance, uh, the use of hedging by clients. So the statistics we, we get uh, and make available may appear to be a little bit skewed. Second, uh, I mean, Tickmill as a company goes to extreme lengths to ensure that its clients are trading investment products in order that they have the opportunity to get the, boss, uh, the, the best possible outcome. We believe that all our clients are professional in their approach to investing. You know, and this includes things like the suitability tests uh, to ensure they know exactly what they're investing in. Uh, educational material that we provide ensures clients are making educated trading decisions. And current legislation is there to ensure that only serious, experienced professional traders are working with Tickmill. Furthermore, I mean, all traders want the best possible outcomes available. And I think Tickmill provides that. And it's probably evidenced by the feedback that we get from our clients. And uh, on the other side, are you aiming at um, geographical expansion? Uh, of course, I'm talking about your services. Yes, uh, we are. Um, uh, you know, we service clients in many countries around the world. And I'd say that uh, Tickmill is global in nature and in outlook. Um, so, yes. And can you share with us where exactly, or it's uh, something that you cannot release? 
No, sure. I mean, we're, we're seeing uh, growth in all areas, but actually probably the most accelerated growth we've seen is in Asia, the MENA region and South America. Um, and while we do do targeted marketing, yeah, in actual fact, we actually attract many clients from word of mouth. Uh, and this is due mainly to Ticknell's trading conditions, which are probably some of the best in the, in the industry. Uh, another point that uh, is that Ticknell's invested heavily in our country managers, as they have the sort of knowledge and unique experience to better understand our clients' needs and act on them much faster than in normal circumstances. And this ultimately leads to better customer service outcomes all around. And talking about geographical expansion, uh, I was also wondering uh, if you thought to, ex to expand also your services, I mean, um, I mean to financial consultancy, for example, or this is not in your schedule? Uh, I mean, at the moment, our primary goal is is to maintain an execution-only based service. Um, however, we have a significant educational offering, and that allows our clients the ability to get up-to-date in trading information, uh, whether it be news or analysis, uh, in order for them to trade in the most effective way. But what we are probably sort of beginning to push through to now uh, is seriously look at other asset classes like equities futures and options, fund management, uh, in order to provide a sort of full service offering. Well, that's pretty interesting. Um, I was wondering, what is your opinion uh, on um, consolidation of, of the sector, in particular in the United States? Actually, two important brokerage companies in the U.S. merged uh, a little bit more than um, two weeks ago. I'm talking about TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab. Uh, can we expect further consolidation in the sector, uh, both in the United States and also here in Europe? And, and secondly, do you think this is something positive rather than negative? Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's interesting you mentioned uh, consolidation, and certainly the Ameritrade Charles Schwab was uh, was fascinating to see. Um, I think in the U.S. there's certainly room for more consolidation, especially when the sort of fintech operators are now sort of looking to take uh, to sort of head into this uh, arena uh, and take market share. I, in I mean, probably in the U.K. in our sector, uh, it's probably seen more as a game of attrition. If you've got the right setup, the right conditions, uh, a strong balance sheet and a loyal client base, you're going to survive generally. Um, I mean, clients have uh, they have a multiple. I mean, they have multiple accounts with different providers. Uh, and what we're finding is that they'll probably oscillate towards the most solid brokers like Ticknell. Uh, you know, this actually impacts the weaker, less competitive brokers, which forces them uh, to consolidate or even actually leave the industry. So, so, so that's where we see the sort of, uh, the, the market going in this, in, in, in this region. Uh, so, so you don't, do not expect this, um, how can I say consolidation wave, uh, to come also here, here in Europe? Well, there, I mean, there is consolidation, but there's also, uh, there's also sort of, uh, I guess, attrition by, by, um, weaker uh, uh, operations actually just literally leaving the industry. We don't need to go after uh, the smaller fish, basically, because, uh, like I said, clients generally have multiple accounts with different brokers. Uh, so you lose one broker, but there's still another one to go to. And uh, talking about brokers, uh, what would you advise our viewers? Which are the main requirements to look for a broker? Because certainly um, this is an important, uh, important thing to choose the correct broker. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a big question uh, and all clients should ask, you know, similar, similar questions like this. Um, I, you know, strong regulation. Uh, you know, we're, we, we, we're a FCA regulated entity. Uh, the FCA is a gold standard uh, and, and Tickmill as a firm supports strong regulation. Um, a strong balance sheet gives confidence both to clients and to our counterparties. Uh, competitive, consistent spreads are always going to reduce costs for clients. Competitive execution speed I mean, we've got many algo traders, and this is a major requirement for them. 
I mean, there are lots of things that, that make up the whole, like VPS, uh, educational material, and so on and so on. Um, everything that you need to facilitate uh, effective trading. But probably one of the most important elements, I would say, is, is customer service. And uh, what, I mean, what do I mean by this? I, I mean effective communication and support from the Ticknell team. And possibly the most important element of this is uh, honesty and integrity. Uh, you know, this is the ethos uh, by which Ticknell would like to be known. And um, do you expect any, um, how can I say, negative or positive impact on Ticknell after the Brexit is going to be done? Huh, um, well, I'm not sure if Brexit is going to be done. We're, I think we just got to wait to see uh, till, uh, till Friday morning. Uh, I, my personal view, it's going to be a close one. Um, but I do believe the Conservatives will get in. Uh, having said that, and not wanting to hedge myself fully, uh, we've had so many upsets, it, there's still room for one more. I was asking this because actually um, Tickmill has been very successful here in Italy and actually my next question is your general assessment of your work here in Italy and what have you done so far? Okay, we, I mean we've been active in the Italian market since, uh, since 2015 uh, and we've seen significant growth, I mean, thanks to a real sort of local approach, as I said before, through our sort of uh, regional uh, operators. Um, we've been at Expos in Rimini, in Milan, in Rome, uh, and, and we do many online web webinars, um, and, you know, and that's been a major boost for us. Uh, I mean, it's fair to say that last year, I mean, it's been a bit affected by, by the ESMA measures, but actually we continue to offer a quality service and uh, we look to expand our project range in, uh, to our Italian clients because for us, it's, you know, it really is a significant and important market uh, being at the heart of the EU. Um, and, and that's really where we want to stay. And uh, exactly, you were talking about Xbox. Where is the next stop? Where are we going to see you? Well, we, I mean, the Rimini, Milan, Rome are, are the ones. We've just been in Germany. Uh, but uh, in Italy, uh, it, it, it will be will be doing the rounds for sure. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Duncan Anderson, CEO of Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your opinion. Many thanks indeed. Thank you.